When you think about preserving our national history, you probably think about the National Archives or perhaps the Smithsonian Institution. But did you know there was another very important National Archive right here in our own backyard? The building opened in 1923. Paul Erickson is the director of U of M's William L. Clements Historical Library. Our collections cover the history of North America and the Caribbean up to 1900. We collect in four main areas. We collect printed books, uh, graphic items, maps, and manuscripts, so handwritten materials. Paul began my treasure tour with this remarkable Bible. So this is an incredibly important book. This is the first complete Bible printed in what's now the United States. It's printed in 1663 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. But as you'll notice, this is not in English. Um, this Bible was printed in Wampanoag, which is the language of the Native American people who live on Cape Cod. A little closer to home, here is the original deed from the Native American sale of Mackinac Island to the British. By the way, the island sold for 5,000 British pounds. And how about this? A 1761 British map of the captured French fort at Detroit. The roads in the fort were named, some of which you may recognize as streets you drive on today. Clements Library's Revolutionary War collection is extensive and significant. This is Paul Revere's print of the Boston Massacre, and you'll, as you'll see, it's called the Bloody Massacre. So this is a piece of political propaganda designed to inflame sentiment against the British occupation of Boston. And these letters literally had me shaking in awe. So the first letter here is from General Thomas Gage to Francis Smith in April of 1775, ordering British to, troops to conquer Massachusetts. So this is really the letter that starts the military phase of the American Revolution. The next letter is from July of 1780, and it's a coded letter from Benedict Arnold to his British spy handlers negotiating for his price for turning over West Point to British control. Uh, and then the final letter is a really rare thing. It is the only known letter from George Washington where he mentions his famous teeth. So it's a letter to his dentist asking for him to send him a pair of pliers, a pincers, so that he can adjust the wire on his dentures because they're uncomfortable. The library's collection of African American history is likewise significant such as Phyllis Wheatley Peters 1773 Book of Poetry. This is the first book ever published by an African American. And then there's this letter from Frederick Douglass to a woman across town asking for $2.50 so he could help get an escaped slave over to Canada. This is evidence of the commission of a federal crime. Uh, the Fugitive Slave Act is in effect now. Nobody should have saved this note. The William L. Clements Library is one of actually two historical archives here on the U of M campus.